Hello and welcome back to the Tetris tutorial. There are a couple more things we need to finish for the rotation. Uh, first of all, there was a mistake I was making. So if we go to the block base, we have the locked. Um, I don't think that was for rotation. Uh, I think it's for something else. So let's go ahead and make that variable and just name it can rotate. So I'll just name it can rotate, compile it. Then we need to find all the instances of locked. So just to find references, it should be only be a couple. Yeah, so the lock wasn't for rotation. It was for uh, something else. Uh, I guess I got confused there. Now we have rotate block where it says locked. Just go ahead and switch that with uh, can rotate. And then we can make this variable uh, private so it doesn't show up in the child classes. So compile and save. And then uh, let's go back to the child classes. And the only one we need to change is this O block. So where it says, uh, well, the locked is, uh, it's gone, but can rotate, set that to be, uh, or make sure it's false, which means that we have to go through, um, actually all of these and then just set can rotate to true on all the child classes. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so after you've done that, then we need to go and go to uh, push block up and finish the uh, this function and the move over test. And then we'll be done with this video. We can finally go ahead and start testing it. So we need to go to the uh, push block up function and go ahead and finish that. So uh, let's go ahead and promote steps to a local variable. So steps underscore L. Then we need to get the block and make sure it's not locked in place. Then we need to do a uh, sequence. The second part of the sequence uh, we'll have to come back to later because that deals with the timer. So uh, we'll be coming back to that later. But the first thing we'll, that we're going to do is we're going to uh, literally put push the block up. So we'll do set actor location. Then we'll need to uh, get the actor location. And then we could break off this and do a plus. So again, instead of breaking this and and then re uh, recombining it, we can just do an addition. Uh, now it's not just 32. We still we need to take into account how many steps we want to move it. So we take steps, and then we can multiply it by 32. But we want to do int times float, so that way it converts it for us. So steps times 32. Now for this part, we do actually need to break it. Uh, you could just do a um, split struct, but uh, we'll just break it and then we'll put that onto the Z axis. So it'll move it up how many steps you want to do it, and which is 32. Every step is 32 pixels or 32 units. So that's how that's going to work. But now we need to update the grid data uh, in order to reflect it. So we'll get another for loop and then we'll do the uh we'll get the grid data as array again then we'll break it we'll break the the point now we're just taking the column and we're subtracting it by how many steps by how many steps that way it gets pushed up then uh we need to go ahead and promote this to a uh, local variable. I'm just going to call it new data underscore L. Then go ahead and drag off this and then do get the uh, add array node. Then we'll break this. Then all we need to do is just uh, recombine everything. So we do want to keep the block sprite and whether it was destroyed or not. We can. I'm just going to split this. And then we'll plug in row into row and then column into column. And we're done with that part. So this basically sets the grid data to be uh, what it should be if it was pushed up. So everything is basically in sync. You can think of it that way. And then after that's completed, we need to take the block data. So we'll set it off to completed. Then we'll take and then grid data from array. So plug that in and then the new data. And we're pretty much done with this um, for now. 
but let's go ahead and add a uh, branch here so we have it ready and this is for resetting the timer so when we eventually implement the timer if we want to reset it you'll see what I mean later it'll make more sense later but I'll just leave it like this for now and I'll add a uh, return node I'll plug both of those in for now okay so we got that function finished close that out and then let's go over to the uh, move over test function and as usual the first thing we want to do is we want to know if we're going to the left or to the right but before we do that let's go ahead and promote this to a variable promote to a local variable and we'll just name it pieces rot underscore l then same thing with hit pieces and we'll plug that into the branch and now we'll start with the true condition we need some room because there are there is quite a few things we need to do we also need a sequence to make it a little bit more organized so now we want to get a for each loop with break and that's the first thing we want to work with so I'll plug that in uh, we need the pieces rotation that's what we're going to work with so what we're doing is we're moving it over pretending that we're moving it over and testing to see if it was a hit piece it was a piece that was in the hit array so let's break this again we only need the point we don't need any anything else so I'll hide that so go ahead and get another uh, make piece data uh, struct I'm gonna hide everything but the point so it looks a little nicer now we're gonna take this and we're gonna plug in the column column into column and then the row we're gonna subtract it now what are we gonna subtract it from now uh, this is another local variable that we need to uh, make so just call it move uh, move underscore L and this is basically how many times uh, we've moved the block over so we can keep testing it if that makes sense but we need to get the hit pieces and then look for the contains uh, node and then we're gonna check and see if it was in the contains if it was one of the uh, the pieces that was hit and if it was then we need to increase the move uh, ver or move variable so we'll add that uh, we want to look for increment int and then we'll just plug in uh, move so we add it by one and then when that happens uh, we have to loop the, the wire back around here so we do need another sequence though this is where it gets pretty confusing then zero plug into break and then then one plug that into the execution pin so take this execution pin and plug it in over here and then you can double click to add uh, reroute nodes to kind of clean it up a little bit and make it look a little nicer uh, I'm going to straighten this out press a um, and then I'll bring it down a little so it's a little bit more nicer and then after this is finished we need to again get another for loop and then the pieces that are rotated we're going to work with that we will break it because we're going to work with the point again and then we need to get the uh, Tetris game and check again to see if the place was filled. Then a switch statement. So we'll plug that in to the switch statement. So column into column. And then once again, we need to subtract it by how many times uh, we moved. So plug that in as well. I plug that into a row. So let me take a minute to try and clean this up a little bit. Uh, after it's completed, we need to return. So we'll return true, and then uh, we'll return how many times it moved. Now here, uh, we need another return node. Add a return node, and for taken an outside grid, we return false and the steps should be negative one so we can't move basically so compile and save okay uh, the next part for the false or if we're uh, rotating it to the left or moving it to the left that is uh, it's pretty simple we'll just copy and paste this so control C control V I'm trying to push this down a little bit to make it a little bit nicer so plug false into the first sequence node and then all the subtractions all we have to do is just switch them with an addition so that's pretty easy 
So compile and save after you switched both the uh, the first loop with an addition and then the second loop with an addition as well. And then uh, it should be false, negative one, and then true, and then you plug in the how many times it moved. So we'll go ahead, compile and save, and we're done with these two uh, functions, and that should be everything. And we spawn in a block. Uh, you can press, I have it, um, I'm rotating it to the left right now, but yeah, left and right works. I uh, had it disconnected when I was figuring out what went wrong, but yeah. So you can now rotate it to the left and to the right. It pushes itself out of the way. Now, if you go through the uh, wall or the floor, I mean, uh, it has that bug. So we'll fix that in a minute here. But everything else works. And even if you build a line and push it over uh, and rotate it, I mean, it will push itself out of the way. There are a couple things I messed up on. So if we click on rotate block, um, you need to switch can rotate. Uh, you set true branch into can rotate and then if false, it should plug into uh, or it should return false because it can't rotate. Um, I accidentally flipped that. So then we need to go to the the rotate block or can or check can rotate function and we need to go over to the handle pass floor and we need to switch this not equal to taken to equal to uh, taken then we can plug that in to the branch okay so uh, really quickly there was a bug um, so let me show you I had both of these set to true so if you take a I block and you put it you kind of corner it to where when you it shouldn't be able to rotate because it'll be out of balance or hit the block so if you try and rotate it that would happen. Um, and then apparently it looks like everything would break. But what you need to do is go back to um, the handle hit block from the rotate block. So when we push it to the right, uh, uncheck ignore and then get a branch. And so if we were able to push it to the right, then plug into can rotate. But if it couldn't, because it hit a block or went out of bounds, then put a uh, plug in no rotation and do the same thing uh, to this one here. So true into can rotate and then false into no rotation. Compile and save. And now if we try it, uh, that bug shouldn't happen anymore. So if I take it, I'm trying to rotate it. Um, it's, it's not letting me uh, rotate it. And same thing with the uh, right side so I can't I can't rotate it no matter what I do so okay um, that's gonna do it for uh, this video um, thank you for watching uh, before I in the video I would like to uh, first of all apologize for again the really slow um, uploads because like I said it's very difficult for me to be able to record videos um, in summer um, I'm not sure how other creators get around that because um, like I said uh, as soon as I turn like a fan or an AC on it just you could you hear it in the mic and the whole tutorial or the whole recording is basically ruined so um, but yeah I'm starting to record uh, late at night when it's cool and then edit them edit the videos in the morning uh, that makes it a lot uh, easier uh, for me to do um, but once again thank you for watching uh, I would like to mention I have a Patreon that you can go to if you would like to support me. I would say though that I haven't, there are some things on there that I was uh, said that I would have uploaded before I finished the tutorial, but a bunch of things came up as soon as I started doing recording, so I wasn't able to finish it. And like I said, summer came and it's too hot to record. But uh, yeah, so if you do plan on, so if you want to go to Patreon, maybe because you want the additional videos um, that I'm going to make. Um, they're not there yet, so but I will get to them. 